Once again, the conflict in the Middle East has reached the edge of a dangerous and frightening precipice. The attacks by Hamas on Israel at the weekend have rightly been met with outrage and condemnation here in Ireland and internationally, and I join in that condemnation unreservedly. There is no justification for targeting civilians and taking civilians as hostage, and all hostages should be released immediately. Our thoughts are with everyone hurt and harmed, and we hope for the safety of Irish citizen Kim Damty, who is missing. Taoiseach, these attacks have occurred against the backdrop of decades of deep injustice. Israel brutalises the Palestinian people daily. Palestinian self-determination is ruthlessly suppressed, and for decades, the Israeli state has breached international law through collective punishment, annexation, the confiscation of lands, and the imposition of an apartheid regime. And all the while, the international community has, at best, looked the other way. At worst, it has facilitated Israel's breaches of international law, undermining the pathway and efforts to achieve the agreed two-state solution. So now, as we speak, Israel's retaliation and collective punishment of Gaza is already underway. Israeli rockets rain down hell on an impoverished, beleaguered refugee population, half of whom are children. In the face of this overwhelming military bombardment, they have no food, no medical infrastructure, no electricity, no fuel, and no way out. Innocent men, women, and children stare annihilation in the eye. So the international community now faces an immediate test of its commitment to peace, justice, and the upholding of democracy and self-determination. Taoiseach, we need ceasefires, dialogue, and the enforcement of international law. We need to see an end to the cycle of violence, an end to the occupation, and an end to the apartheid. I want to welcome the statement made by EU Foreign Affairs Chief Josep Borrell, who has called out Israel's bombardment as a violation of international law, and who has insisted that EU humanitarian aid to Palestine will continue. The Irish government was right, absolutely right, to intervene to help ensure this remained the case. Mr. Burrell has stated very clearly that political engagement and renewed commitment to a peace process can still yield progress, and I agree with him. There is hope. Taoiseach, Ireland can play an immensely positive role. Our own history of oppression, colonisation, dispossession gives us a valuable perspective to make a real difference. The Irish peace process shows that there is always a way to resolve even the most bitter, intractable situations. So we must use all our diplomatic influence and be to the fore in driving a decisive international intervention in the Middle East. Is Fajr Leheran Ro Rihovak took Agus Jarfaka Imerchi Daka Labakakur or in Irak and Brescia, Agus Kunbalak Atnucha Kunashia Kona and I'm Shu Saman Irher. We need, I believe, an all of Oireachtas approach in calling for a retreat from this terrifying precipice to build the consensus in the Dáil for peace, the rule of international law, for Palestinian human rights and self-determination, because the eyes of the international community are now wide open to the brutality and the escalation of the conflict. Taoiseach, Mr. Burrell's powerful intervention reflects the international imperative to achieve a cessation of hostilities and an intervention that upholds the primacy of international law to bring about a just Ramadan settlement Yaffe. and a lasting peace. The question for us and for you now, Taoiseach, is what part does Ireland play in all of this? Thanks, um, <clears throat> thanks Deputy, for your question. Um, at the outset, I uh, want to reiterate Ireland's total condemnation of the attack by Hamas and other militant groups on Israel, and the devastating uh, loss of life that it has caused. Uh, civilians were targeted, young people, older people, children, peace activists killed or taken hostage. 
in these circumstances, Israel has the right to defend itself. It is surrounded by enemies, many of whom want to see Israel wiped off the map, or as they say, from the mountains to the sea. It's critical that this is done within the parameters of, in of hum international humanitarian law, with a response that is proportionate, and protection of civilians and de-escalation must be a priority. Uh, Israel has united itself in response to these attacks, and Israel is gaining a lot of solidarity uh, from other parts of the world. But I believe that will evaporate, and evaporate very quickly, if the Israeli response in Gaza and elsewhere is disproportionate. So there must be restraint. There must be no attacks on civilian infrastructure. If it's unacceptable for the president of Russia uh, to target power stations and civilian, civilian infrastructure in Ukraine, then the same must apply to the Israeli government and the actions it's, it takes uh, on targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure in Gaza. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I can give the assurance that Irish aid um, will continue, as will EU aid. That aid is not aid for Hamas, it's aid for Palestinian civilians, uh, and they need it in order to uh, have any form of decent existence, and certainly we will, we will not support um, any suspension of Irish or EU aid, provided the money goes to the Palestinian people uh, and not, uh, uh, not, 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 not to Hamas. Uh, in terms of Ireland's role, um, we will do all that we can at an EU level uh, and all that we can at a UN level, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs is very much uh, engaged uh, in, that, uh, in that effort. As I say, we have a long-standing commitment to supporting humanitarian aid and development projects in Israel and in the occupied Palestinian territories. Our funding provides both emergency assistance to the most vulnerable, while also assisting the Palestinian Authority in public service delivery on the West Bank. The funding is 16 million euros this year, and that, and that will continue. Deputy MacDonald. Thank you. And Thishuk, I, I very much uh, welcome your confirmation of the fact that uh, aid will continue to the Palestinian people, and also your insistence, quite correctly, that the rule of law be applied equally without fear or favour, and that the Israeli state is not exempt uh, to the rules which apply uh, to all others, and that the Palestinian people have rights that are inalienable and that must be vindicated, uh, not just now in a time of acute conflict, but always. And here's the problem, Tishak. You see, for far too long, day in, day out, week in, month in, year in and year out, the Palestinian experience has been one of desertion by the international community. And I think now has to be a moment where we see a step change, where we see clarity of purpose and leadership, and where it is made clear to everybody, including Mr Netanyahu and his administration, including to all concerned in the Israeli state, that they cannot play fast and loose as a, a rogue state in violating again and again Thank the most you, basic rights the of the Palestinian now, people. Can you confirm for us, Taoiseach, that that will be the baseline position of the Irish government Thank and the much. Irish state? Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Deputy. The baseline position of the Irish government uh, is that we can only bring peace to the region um, through a two-state solution. I think that becomes increasingly difficult with every day that passes, with every settlement that is built, but we still believe uh, that the best solution, the only solution um, that will bring peace to the region uh, is a two-state solution, and that's the outcome uh, which we support and we strongly support.